Next, we'll set up our PCR reactions. First, we'll set the volume of our micropipette to 20 microliters. And we'll add our master mix to our PCR tubes. Notice the PCR tubes, they're much smaller than our regular microtubes. As you'll see in the reading, the master mix has a number of different things in it. It includes something called TAC polymerase, which allows us to make millions of copies of DNA. After that, we'll get a fresh tip and we'll add our primer mix. What the primer mix does is it allows us to make millions of copies of our exact target DNA. We don't want to make millions of copies of any DNA. The primer mix allows us to be specific about what we're amplifying. So we've added our primer mix and our master mix to our tube. Now we have to retrieve our DNA from the centrifuge. You're going to set your micropipette to 10 microliters. Get a fresh tip. And we want to make certain when we open our tube that we don't shake this tube up. We want to take just the very top 10 microliters out of the top. We don't want any of that Kelex on the bottom of the tube to get mixed up with our DNA. Then you're going to add your 10 microliters of your DNA to your master mix and your primer mix. And now your reaction is ready for the thermal cycler. The thermal cycler is the machine where the polymerase chain reaction, or PCR, takes place. You may have read in the reading that the thermal cycler can increase its temperature very quickly to a specific temperature. It can also cool down very quickly to a specific temperature. Typically, we set the machine to do around 30 cycles of these specific increases and decreases. If everything works well, the TAC polymerase will make millions of copies of our target DNA. Now, if our PCR is successful, we'll be able to visualize our ALU region through a process called agarose gel electrophoresis. We can visualize DNA by running it on an agarose gel like this one. We load our PCR samples with our DNA on one end of the gel and run electricity through the gel in a process called electrophoresis. DNA has a negative charge and will move toward the positive end of our gel box. One way we can then see the DNA is to stain it and in this example, expose it to LED light. To see our sample results, we'll head back to our student guide and lesson slides.